Hey guys, welcome back to Cypher Steel Forge. So we're doing another unique thing today. Uh, wow, we're working on a lot of projects all at one time anymore. Uh, just with school being out, I've got more time on my hands and I'm trying to fill up the gun shop showcases. And uh, yeah, so I, I literally just finished that uh, Iron Age axe, if you saw that video. And <clears throat> I've got another, the rescue axe in the works. I'm going to show you all uh, parts of that, not going to do the whole thing, <clears throat> been, been kind of the MO lately, I, I may go back to the whole project, we'll see, but uh, I was working on another project and just kind of realized this might be interesting to some people, and uh, <clears throat> I told y'all I got the mini lathe, and the first uh, project I did uh, for, for a customer was that walnut handle and it worked, but the very, very first thing I turned just as a scrap thing, just to see what would happen, was a piece of crepe myrtle. And, uh, see, I, I didn't do a terrible job. Now, it was kind of wonky. Or was this? You know what? No, this wasn't crepe myrtle. This was cedar. Yeah, this was a piece of wonky cedar. So it had little bits out. <clears throat> and in the process, uh, it took a chunk out. Uh, I was drawing, and uh, so you know, it, it didn't matter at the time because I was just testing out the lathe and the tools. All right, so I, I got a friend whose birthday's coming up, and uh, it, he really enjoys uh, playing D and D, uh, doing the Ren Fair thing. So I thought I'd do a really cool thing, you know, make make use of this little thing. So <clears throat> I took and shaved down a, a little piece of that uh, red resin that just kind of fit in there. So that, that'll kind of inlay. And once it epoxies, I'll smooth everything down. So what I'm doing now is uh, I'm taking a little bit of the copper we got from the scrapyard and... Uh, See, I've already turned it down some, uh, uh, just turning it on the grinder, and so that fits inside there. And basically what we're going to make is, it's, it's a kind of really cool little magic wand. I may have to, uh, may have to shorten that a little bit. I'm going to have to shave a lot off there. That's insanely heavy. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of worried about that breaking the wood right now. Let me stop moving that around anyways so what i'm gonna do is just uh not right now it's about lunch time and i'm sweating a lot so it's time to go ahead and take a break but i'm just gonna keep turning this and uh kind of shape it give it give it some little bumps and, and and spirals and whatnot and just turn it into a really cool polished copper wand What in the world was that? Well, aside from the hammer falling apart, which is pretty par for the course around here, uh, yeah, that was really different than anything you've ever seen before. Uh, and uh, quick stop and shout out to the uh, woodworkers of TikTok and YouTube. Thank y'all ever so much for doing what you do because, uh, yeah, that hammer fell apart because a long time ago the wedge fell out 
and I didn't know what I was doing, so I drove a couple nails in there and thought that would hold it. It obviously didn't. Uh, actually, I think I made that handle and it still wasn't working right. Yeah, so learning how to do that wedge so I could do that wood mallet, I just fixed three of my hammers in like 10 minutes and they're good now. So, appreciate y'all guys. That was great. So that hammer that fell apart is actually back together and better than ever. Uh, but what y'all saw being so different was me forging something that was cold. It wasn't red hot. And at one point, I don't know if y'all could see the bucket, but I actually dipped it in the water and then went hammering on it. Didn't you say that hammering on cold things can break it? Well, yes. Yes, hammering on cold steel will break it. Today, we were not forging steel. This was working on that copper uh, piece for that wand. Now, you remember, I, I ground it down and uh, realized I was going to spend forever grinding the shape I wanted. So what I did was cut it in half and uh, took it to the forge, heated it up a little bit, but copper, it works at so much lower temperatures. You don't have to get it red hot. To make it soft and malleable and so that's why it looked like I was working it cold and at one point I did work it cold which you can do with copper so yeah so what we've done is we've just forged out this nice little piece here uh, took a lot of that weight off there <laughs> so now it kind of looks more like a flame and of course we're gonna repolish it so it looks like copper again so we're gonna take it to the grinder I'm gonna put some little bit of fancy shapes to it I kind of got the overall flame-ish shape that I'm, that I'm shooting for with it because it is supposed to be a fire wand. You know, remember with the piece of red there. But uh, yeah, so we're just going to take it to the grinder and uh, kind of do a little bit of shaping on it. Kind of put a point on there, and uh, but we're going to make sure that the copper shines. We're going to polish it all the way up to the thousand grit. And then we'll go in and uh, polish this up, glue it all up, and then be ready to go. Alright, uh, see we got most of the black off there, you know, don't matter there, it'll be glued up, but uh, got us a nice kind of little wiggle shape, had like a little flame coming up, uh, put us a little tip on there, so now we're just going to take it and uh, run it through the grits and uh, polish it up real quick. Alright, you can see a huge difference now, all we've done is run it through the 220 so far, and yeah, that is... Very nice, very shiny. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be really pretty. So let's finish this thing up and uh, put it together and we'll let the epoxy dry while we work on other projects. All right, so we got it run up to the 400 grit and as you can see that is incredibly shiny and pretty. We also went ahead and did the 400 grit on the handle it looks gorgeous. It's going to be a really fun thing. So what we're going to do now is just take it out and epoxy this thing up so that uh, yeah, it all fits up nicely in the hand. And uh, after once we've uh, the epoxy set, I'll figure out what stain I want to use on this uh, cedar. The only uh, downside is grabbing just a random piece that was all wonky. It doesn't have any of the cedar red in there that, that's so pretty. And 
I mean, that's just life. That, that's all it is. So, uh, it does have some, some dark gray, which I'm really interested to see. I, I may hit it with linseed oil, or, or maybe a really, like, natural looking stain first, just to see how, how that, that dark gray plays out. Uh, we definitely want something that's going to counterbalance this incredibly shiny uh, copper. So, uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm going to finish shining the copper first. Because we don't want it to... Uh, well, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Alright guys, so we've got it polished up all the way through the thousand grit. And man, did that copper come out shiny. Um... That is, I'm just dry wiping it with a paper towel right now to get some of the uh, dust off from this last sanding. And all things considered, I think I'm going to go with a dark stain to really offset that copper and the, uh, the red. So I'm using a dark walnut and we're going to just see how this comes out. The one good thing can be said is if you don't like the stain for whatever reason, you can always sand off that layer and try again. Although it's not a lot of fun, you can do it. And uh, I think I'm liking this a lot already though. I, I think this is a good choice. Bit of a hard time getting it down into those little grooves. Yeah, there we go. I'll make sure we get that laying down in those little grooves we cut when we were turning it and down in the little hole at the end there so the uh, the hole in the end the same as the hole in the end of the uh, uh, crochet hook it was just about the turning at the time I didn't have what they called a uh, spur uh, it, it it just holds the wood a little better, uh, so I, all I had was a drill bit sort of thing that came with it. I've gotten the spur since then, so I don't think I should have to uh, drill holes anymore, but we'll see. You know, living and learning, uh, playing around with new tools and new techniques. I've said it before, I, that's what I love about this, is uh, I love the challenge. I love the, the, the fact that I get to do new things and learn all the time and, and that's one of the things I modern times man go on YouTube and just learn all sorts of stuff uh, cannot think of the man's name right now I, uh, if I think about it while I'm doing this video I'll put a link to him he is an Irish woodworker I think it is Irish well, you're gonna be mad at me if I'm wrong on that one huh but uh, anyways, he does amazing work, and I like watching his videos, and I've learned a lot, including the wedging that has helped so much with the hammers. That looks amazing. See, that, that looks just... That came out gorgeous. Yes. Yes to the dark walnut with the, uh, the copper. So... Wow, yeah, I'm, I'm really... I'm blown away by that. That... That really looks awesome. So what we're gonna do now is the usual, and I will just, uh, let's start with a little bit of this linseed oil. Cause again, I, I, uh, pretty sure that cedar was some that I had purchased. And, uh, you know, you get it at the flea market and it's a really good price and that's awesome, but you also have no idea how long it's been sitting there getting dry. So you definitely want to hit it with that linseed oil to, Keep it protected but but also it really helps to make it pop I don't know what if it, you know I was able to see it before but that looks like a red gem in there now <laughs> that looks amazing I, I'm loving this um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this up on the website as a separate thing and I already offered some wands. I, I will start offering forged copper wands now. 
they, they are going to be a little bit more expensive. Sorry guys, but copper is more expensive than steel. It costs me more to get it, and so I have to pass that on. And that's just kind of life. But uh, it does make for a gorgeous, gorgeous wand there. I mean, you could wander, <laughs> you could really wander around Ren Fairy and get some uh, get some really cool looks, you know, from people. You're carrying that. Yeah, you're me. You're at Comic Con. You're a wizard. <laughs> um, Harry Potter convention, if they have those. I'm just kind of assuming they probably do. I don't actually know, but they, they have conventions on everything else, so. You know, uh, whatever. If, if you're going somewhere and your cuz playing some sort of magic user, uh, but he co <laughs> copper wand seems to be really nice. Now, of course, nothing wrong with the steel wands. They are some of my favorites, too. Nothing says I'm a warcaster. Quite like having a half steel wand, right? Alright, well, that's it. It's all finished up. That came out beautiful. I, I really love the inlay, so learned a lot with this one, and this is going to really help. I'd never done an inlay before. That worked out beautifully. Uh... The very first thing I ever turned. This was just supposed to be a practice piece of wood that got chunked down as soon as I was done, which is what I usually do with the if the wood's too busted to ever use it again. Just chunk it out there in the yard, let it decompose. Man, I tell you. But uh, this one here, I was going to do that, and then just thought, hey, you know, really ain't that bad. Let's give it a try. So yeah, that came out beautiful, and. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it, and I'm hoping my friend will be too for his birthday. And I said this will go up on the shop. And uh, I appreciate y'all watching, and y'all take care. <laughs>